Great, so at this stage, we've marked and drilled all of our holes. Yep. We've reamed the undercarriage, so uh, the leg holes from underneath, um, and reamed those to fit. So the next step, whilst the plank is still flat, is to complete the holes in the top and ream all of those, just because it's easier to have things like your sliding bevel yeah. um, uh, and easier to clamp and, and that kind of thing. So all of our holes into the top just go straight down 90 degrees, um, apart from the arm posts. Yeah. So the ones at the front that are supporting the arm are splayed outwards, and they're splayed outwards at 90 degrees um, so we've got the sight line here. So this line here is at 90 degrees to the line between the post the holes. Yeah, the post holes. So we've got the crest post at the back, arm post at the front. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You can see that's our sight line there at 90 degrees to um, this line here. And we've got our sliding bevel at 14 degrees. So mm -hmm. we're just doing it directly to that. Um, so shall we, maybe we'll get uh, one that we've made earlier up onto the bench and we can just go into a bit more detail about why we've done that. Yep. So we've got our spindles. Uh, so we've got these three spindles at the back and our crest post, because mm. this is where our crest is going to sit down onto, um, and then the arm post at the front. Now. Do you want to talk us through the fitting of these? Because yep. we're reaming to fit exactly the same way as the legs, yep. um, but we are measuring them, we're measuring the arm post slightly differently to the back post. Yeah. So the, the idea behind reaming was bringing accuracy into it. So we use these score lines on the leg as the reference point. So all th this distance here is the same on every leg. The reference point on the arm posts and the crest posts are the bottom of these beads. And I suppose, so in terms of accuracy, because the beads are, are as where as everything sits on, right? Yep. So in an ideal world, you'd measure to the top. You can't do that with the dividers. No. Um, so we're kind of basing it on all of these beads that we've done at kind of half an inch. So um, we'll just do it from the bottom of the bead. If one of your beads is a lot thinner, then you may want to adjust that. Yeah. Um, but you'll notice that if, if of the four posts, the one bead is really skinny or one's really fat, then you might want to just adjust to that. Yeah, you, you could even put a mark on exactly the same distance along. If you're worried about the size of your beads, you could just mark exactly the same point on all of them. And yeah, reference from that. the top of the bead. Yeah. Just use a ruler, measure down, make a mark, and then that's your reference yeah. point. But so just repeat it. For ease for us, we're just doing the bottom of the bead. Mm -hmm. And we've got two measurements. So yeah. the back post is... Eight and a quarter. Okay. So And that's from the flat uh, surface up to uh, the bottom of the bead. Yep. And that's the same all the way around because these have gone in at 90 degrees. Yep. And then, so how do we do the arm? So the important thing on the arm, we have eight and a half inches is our measurement. And we do it on the longest side. So you'll have your, your sight line will still be on the... Yeah, so, so you where, do it from where the your, sight line. Where your sight line comes out here, yeah. that is the longest side, and it's this measurement here, because it's quite different to that one there. Okay, great. And so just to um, make it clear <coughs> why we're doing it uh, just one angle square to the crest post, was so that when... Um, it's easier to show you on this side. Uh, so when the arm swings around, it wants to reach, it hits the top of the bead here. Um, and there's going to be some uh, bodging <laughs> to true up the arm yeah. so that the bottom of the arm is flat. But we're doing that in another video. The important thing is that the arm post is just splayed in one direction. Yeah. Um, and then it should all just about work. Should just take your time. Take, yes. Take, take your tool and your reamer out like we did and pop your 
posting and have a good, you know, spend some time measuring the angles as you go. You don't have to do this part quickly. And so much easier to see, I think, mm. with the components in position. Absolutely, yeah. So take it out, just like Robin said, take the ream route and actually um, pop the post in and then you can use your um, sliding bevel to see. And, it, and then you can set it to the actual angle and mm. look down the center and look from all angles. And I suppose when you're doing the second one, you can see yeah. um, how symmetrical things are as well. Yeah, and the thing we should mention too is when we were nearly there on this one, we stopped. Yeah. We'd got about an eighth of an inch to go and we did that one. Yes. Just if there was a slight discrepancy at the very end, we could just balance it up. Yeah. Whereas if that's all the way in, that one goes all the way in and there's a tiny difference. There's nothing you can do at that point. Yeah. So we went nearly all the way in. And um, this design is based on a very old, chair very old chair that I'd seen that was actually even more rustic than ours. Mm. Um, and uh, I think it's quite a, an interesting concept. The, the splay that we've got just means that you can use a smaller board. Yeah. So you do get... Um, armchairs that have got no splay mm -hmm. that everything's just straight but they're made from a much bigger board because otherwise someone as big as me can't get their thighs yeah. in between the uh, arms yep so there's there are lots of different options this isn't necessarily the normal way to make a chair no nope. um, but we thought we'd give something different a go obviously you've seen the stuff that Robin does he does all sorts of complicated things and I suppose actually our undercarriage is pretty normal for a Windsor chair. It's almost a blank. Yes, yeah, almost so you could do blank. all sorts of, and actually you could even just leave it as a stool. Mm. Um, so and we may do another video doing a steam bent one. Yeah. I guess, in my mind, a captain's chair is normally jointed. Yes, um, yeah. But we're trying to keep it simpler, maybe a little bit more folky, mm -hmm. uh, a bit rustic. It's more accessible. There is a lot of kit involved in making Windsor chairs. Yes. It may be that we show them how to do a steam bent one another day. Yeah, totally. And obviously our arms and crest have mm -hmm. all come from the same plank that the seats do. Yes. So in theory, you should be able to get hold of one difficult bit of wood, which is the plank. And then these things can be made from all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh, you yeah. could be using sycamore, beech, you could use loads of fruit woods. Mm. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. As long as it's something with some tensile strength. Even with this size, use pine. Yeah. It'd be fine. We're, we're not pushing the tolerance of the wood at all because we've got nice big pieces. Yeah, pine would be fine, but probably don't get something from your hardware store. No. And, and normally you would be Actually, using a hardwood. And you won't enjoy turning pine. Yeah, so ignore that. Yeah, ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, okay. So our posts, we're measuring to the beads. Mm -hmm. um, and these tenons are all over the place at the moment. Those, it's just good to have that extra length. We'll yeah. cut those later and you'll see that in another video when we're fitting the arms and the crest. But for the now, how do we know how far to ream the spindles? Because these haven't got beads on. No, but these are in at 90 degrees, so we've just drawn from the plan to where the top of the tenon was. Right. Reamed a bit, pop it in, use your square, check it, and once the line disappears into the seat, the tenon's fully in. Great, so we've just marked the length of the tenon onto the spindle, mm -hmm. and then we're reaming until that tenon is fully into the seat. Yes. And that's that done. And obviously these are here for strength and comfort, but, uh, Try, trying to get beads to match is enough of a hassle. So if you had three more with beads Oof. here, yeah. you're really asking for a lot for anything to it look neat. It looks pretty fussy as well, yeah. I would have thought. But yeah, I'm with you, that would be difficult. Yeah. Right, so just to recap, um, you've reamed your legs to fit. Now it's time to uh, ream the top half. Uh, make sure you're marking out everything accurately. So the important thing is the sight line. So we've got our sight line coming out this way um, that you'll be able to draw on the plank whilst it's still flat. So at this stage, your plank should be completely flat. Um, and that's at 90 degrees to this line here, uh, which is all marked out on the template. We're doing this at 14 degrees. So the splay is 14 degrees along this sight line and be sure 
to um, use your dividers to measure the inside, uh, so the longest measurement to the bottom of the bead here, um, and that should be eight and a half at the front. Eight, eight and, and a half, half inches. inches. And then the back, it doesn't really matter where you do it because it's just going in square. So you can use your squares to drill straight down. Um, and then that wants to be to eight and a quarter to the bottom of the bead. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you do the same on this side. Um, and then the spindles, you will have drawn on um, the top of your tenon. Uh, and you just make sure that you're reaming until that tenon um, line just goes underneath. Great, so once you've reamed to fit the top, um, then all of your uh, components with tenons on can go back into the drying box and then you can crack on uh, with the next phase which will be carving the seat.